welcome. In this video, I'll show you how we can fold over lists and how this functional pattern can create very compact implementations of some functions we've already seen. I'm going to start out by defining the fold write function for you. So this function exists in the base library, so I'm going to call my version foldr prime. And it has the following type signature, which at first glance is maybe a bit complicated. So I'll explain uh, afterwards uh, what it's doing. So it'll take a function which takes two arguments, one of type A and one of type B, and returns a B. And then the second argument uh, this function takes is a starting value of type B. Uh, next, it takes a list of type A. And finally, it returns a value of type B. So the idea behind folding is basically we have this, this function here, which we give uh, fold right, uh, along with a starting value. And then we have this list which we fold over. And what's going to happen is that we're going to always increment our value using this operation here, starting with a starting value. And then we're going to go through each element of the list and basically fold it up into some final value, which will be of type B. Now, the way uh, fold right is defined is, well, it's defined uh, inductively. So if we fold right with an operation f and starting value z on the empty list, What's going to happen then? Well, in that case, we just return the starting value z. On the other hand, if we fold right um, with an operation f and starting value z with some non-empty lists, so some list of the form x cons x's, then what we're going to do is we're going to apply our operation f to this uh, head value of the list, so this x, and we're going to apply f to what we've folded up so far. So what we've folded up so far is going to be fold right prime of f, uh, z, and the x's, like so. All right, so at first glance, this might be a bit complicated. So let me give you um, the sort of intuition for what folding is doing um, by writing out some sort of Python pseudocode. Now, we saw in the previous video where we folded over natural numbers that somehow folding was like a for loop. And here, it's no different. So the kind of Python code that would correspond to fold right is the following. So we first initialize a value um, to some starting value. So I would set val to be equal to z. And then the sort of meat of the folding is like a for loop. So I would say something like for x in uh, the list I'm giving uh, the folding, so maybe I'll call this x in x's. Uh, we do the following. So we're going to uh, update our value. And how are we going to update it? Well, we're going to update it using this operation f, which we uh, give the fold. So we're going to apply f to the next element in the list. So that's x. And we're going to apply f to the previously accumulated values, val. So this is sort of how folding would look in a imperative language. So folding kind of acts like a for loop where we iterate over all the elements in a list. And we start with a starting value. And then we update the starting value according to this operation, where we're allowed to use um, each element in the list at each step. Now, perhaps this still isn't clear. So I'll uh, give you an example of a fold. So first, I'm going to define a uh, max function. So this will be something um, which takes two ints and returns a third, namely the maximum of both of these ints. So max x, y is going to be uh, the following. So if x is strictly greater than y, uh, then in that case, well, x is the maximum, so I return x. And in the other case, uh, well, I return uh, y, like so. So this is just my own implementation of a max function of two uh, values. So let's maybe uh, test this out. So if I run ghci and I load my script, induction uh, 2, like so, then, well, if I do, like, let's say, max prime of 3, 5, that returns 5, as expected. Now, the idea is we're going to use folding in order to extend this uh, max function here to a list of values. So I want to take a list of, let's say, ints and return the maximum of that list. And uh, one way I can do this is by using uh, fold. So let me write uh, my own version of a maximum function, which will be called maximum prime. And it'll take a list of ints, and it's going to return the largest value occurring in that list, which will be an int as well. 
And now maximum prime uh, of a list of x's will be implemented using our fold right function. So it'll be uh, fold right of some operation. What operation are we going to use? Well, we're going to use our max prime operation. And then we need to say what the starting value is going to be. So I'll leave a blank here for that. And finally, we'll be folding over this uh, list of x's. Now, the starting value in this case should be what we return on the empty list. So we need to think about what the maximum of the empty list should be. And well, intuitively, the maximum of the empty list should be like the smallest number uh, you can get. So anything needs to be bigger than the maximum of the empty list. So if you're uh, doing this in math, you would set the maximum of the empty list to be something like minus infinity. On the other hand, here we don't really have uh, minus infinity, but what we do have is uh, the smallest integer that we can represent um, in Haskell, which is given by min bound of type int. So we saw this, I believe, when I introduced types. So min bound of type int is just the smallest integer that you can still represent. So if I type this here into the console, min bound of type int, you see it's this uh, very large negative number. And that's basically the smallest uh, int that we can represent. And uh, therefore, it makes sense to return this to be the maximum of the empty list. Because uh, when we then go through other values in the list, we always want those other values to be larger than uh, this value. So let me reload my script here. And let's test out our new function. So maximum. Uh, prime of a list of ints. So let's take the list uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Uh, should return the largest number, which in this case is 5. So let me maybe explain iteratively, like using more and more complicated lists, how uh, this maximum prime is using folding to get the result we want. So if we just do maximum prime of the empty list, well, then we're basically applying fold right with the operation max prime with the starting value here. And so we should just return uh, the starting value according to our definition of fold right. So this should return just the min bound of ints, OK? And now if I have a one element list, I uh, land in this case here. So in this case, I have some element, uh, which in this case is 1, which would be assigned to x. And what I'm now doing is I'm applying um, my operation f to x and the previously accumulated value. So in this case, if I do maximum prime of just the list containing 1, what's going to happen is I'm just going to calculate max prime of this first element, 1, with whatever uh, starting value I had previously. So I'm just going to compare this value here, 1, with the well this min bound of type int. And in this case, 1 is, is larger. OK, so now my uh, value for the fold has been updated to 1. And now if I, uh, let's say, uh, add uh, like another element 2 here. Now what's going to happen here is that 2 will be mapped to x. And now I'm applying my operation here, uh, in this case max prime, to 2 with the previously folded up value, which was 1. And so I'm now taking the max of 2 and 1, and that'll return 2. So in this case, uh, my accumulated value now becomes 2. And so you can see that in this way, I always compare the next element in the list with the maximum of all the previous elements. And that will give me like the maximum of the entire list. OK, so I hope that that explanation makes some sense for you. Um, let's now uh, basically do an analogous thing for logical functions. So here I somehow extended this max uh, function, which takes two arguments, uh, to a maximum function, which takes an entire list of arguments and does basically the same operation by folding. So now let's do the same thing with AND and OR. So remember that there's this uh, uh, standard library function called AND, which takes a list of Booleans and returns a Boolean. And what it does is it returns true if all of the values in the list are true, and it returns uh, false otherwise. Moreover, on the empty list, it uh, returns true. And well, secondly, there's this function OR, which does a dual thing. So it takes a list of Booleans, and it returns true if at least one of the elements in the list is true. And on the empty list, it returns false. So we now want to implement our own versions of these using a fold. And basically, um, we're going to imitate what I did here with a maximum function. So the idea is to extend uh, some binary functions which do the same thing to lists using folding. 
All right, so I'll give you a moment to uh, think about this on your own, and maybe in the process you'll uh, manage to understand a bit better how folding works, but my hint basically is just to imitate uh, what I did here, and you just have to think about what the operation is you're going to be using. Uh, well, it should be like the corresponding uh, two-argument Boolean operation, and you also need to think about what the starting value is, and that's just what uh, this function here should return on the empty list. Okay, I'll now uh, proceed to the solution. So basically, uh, and prime of some list x's, well, what should this be? Well, I'm going to apply a fold. And I'm going to use folding to extend the uh, binary function, so this binary operator and to lists. And now I just need to say uh, what the starting value is going to be. So the starting value in this case uh, should be true. So I want to return true on the empty list. And uh, yeah, so I just implement this using a fold like this. Now here, uh, all of these things are underlined in blue because I have the same argument here appearing twice, and this is redundant, so I can just say that and prime is actually this uh, partially evaluated function here. So it's a uh, folder prime partially evaluated with this operation and with the starting value true. All right, and similarly, uh, or prime uh, works uh, completely analogously, so I'm going to fold right, uh, in this case with a binary Boolean operation or, and I'm going to start with a value of false in this case because I want or prime to return false on the empty list. So let's uh, reload this and uh, test out whether this works. So and prime on the empty list should return true, that's correct. And well, it should otherwise only return true if all the entries in the list are true. So that seems to be working and it should return false otherwise, which it does here in this example. Okay, to give you some more practice, uh, here are some other functions you could think about implementing using folding. So some function should take a list of some numbers and add all of them together. And the product function should also take a list of numbers and multiply all of them together. So I'll give you some time to think about how you would uh, implement both of these functions using uh, folding. Again, the pattern is very similar to what's happening up here, except that we're now working with lists of numbers rather than lists of booleans. I'm now going to proceed to the solution here. So I'll implement a function called sum prime, and it's going to take uh, some uh, list of a's, which are of type class num, so that I can actually add them together, and it's going to return the sum of these numbers, so that will be an object of type a. And I'm going to implement uh, sum prime using a fold. So it'll be uh, fold right prime, and now I need to give the operation. So what operation should I pick? Well, it's going to add all of the elements together. So I want to like iteratively add together these elements, so it'll be plus. And then I need to give a starting value. So what starting value makes sense here? So on the empty list, the sum of an empty list should be zero. And well, I want to start with zero, otherwise I would like uh, be offset in my sum. So I need to choose zero here. And uh, product works analogously. So uh, product will have exactly the same type signature. So it takes a list of uh, nums and returns a num. And uh, yeah, prod prime will be uh, fold right prime. In this case, the operation will be multiplication and my starting value will be one. Okay, so let's uh, reload and make sure that this works. So for instance, uh, sum prime of one, two, three should be six, which is indeed the case. And similarly, prod prime of one, two, three should also be six, which is also the case. Now, in fact, it's possible to do uh, more complicated things with folds as well. That isn't just like extending some binary function um, to a list. So I'll give you uh, some examples of that. So let's think about how we would uh, implement the following functions. So these are uh, some standard list functions, so length, uh, then we can think about the lm function, which checks uh, whether a given object occurs in a list. And finally, let's think about implementing the filter function using folds. So with all three of these, we can uh, also implement them as a fold because basically they involve traversing a list and figuring uh, something out about uh, the elements of that list. However, in this case, it's not uh, the same as above, so we aren't just extending like a some sort of binary operation to a list. Rather, uh, the function which we'll be applying for the fold will be more complicated, and you need to think about how uh, you would code it in order for it to achieve the, the goal we want.
All right, so I suggest you take some time to think about for yourself how you would write these functions using folds. Um, it'll be more difficult than the, the previous example, so if you don't get it straight away, don't worry about it. You can also stick around for uh, my solution of maybe the first one and then uh, try the others on your own. Okay, so I'll now uh, proceed to implementing the length function using folds. So right, the length is just an operation which takes some list of a's and returns an int, namely the length of that list. And now the idea is to uh, write this using a fold. Okay, so I'll uh, write this is equal to a folder. And then I need to give it a starting value and an operation. Now the uh, starting value should be whatever this returns on the empty list. So the empty list should have length zero. And the operation should basically just increment the, the previously accumulated value by one. Uh, so one convenient way to write this is using a lambda function. So um, this operation, remember, has to uh, take something of type A. So that's the, uh, the type of the thing we have in our list. And then it has to also take something of type B, which is the, like the type of the value we're accumulating. So the first argument of this operation is going to be like the, the next element of the list. So it'll be like the X that occurs next in the list. And then it's also going to take the value, which is the previously accumulated value, and then it needs to return something. And now in this case, we just want to update our value by adding one to it. So this function should just take x and a value, and it should return val plus one. So notice here that I'm not even using the element in the list. So somehow length doesn't care about what elements you have in the list. It just cares about how many there are. So here I'm completely ignoring this first argument in this anonymous function. Rather, I'm just taking the second, this accum accumulated value, and I'm adding one to it. And that way I iteratively add one for each element occurring in the list, and this will give me the length of the list. So if I reload, I can make sure this works by uh, checking, let's say, length prime of one, two, three. That should return three, and indeed it does. Okay, so now I'll move on to the next function, which we're going to implement using folds, namely the element function here. So I'll write a function called lm prime, and it should take an object of type a along with a list of a's, and it should return a boolean that tells us whether that object occurs in the list or not. All right, so now um, lm prime of this uh, object y we're checking. So what, what should this be? So I'm again going to implement this using a fold. So it'll be fold right of some operation and some starting value. Now, if I have the empty list, then y can't occur in the empty list. So my starting value should be false in any case. And now the difficult part will be writing this operation in order to uh, make it actually check whether y is in the given list. Okay, again, I'm going to write an anonymous function here. So this operation will take the next element in the list. That's my x together with the value I've previously accumulated. So I'll write uh, this val like this. And now this value might be false or it might be true, but in any case, I want to update it in the following way. So if y, this element I'm looking for in the list, is equal to x, well, in that case, I want to update my value to true, regardless what it was before. And if, well, y is not equal to x, so the element in the list I'm currently looking at isn't the same as y, well, then I just want to keep my previously accumulated value. So the value will switch from false to true the first time I encounter um, the element y in the list. And well, after that, I still continue going through the list and it's possible that the same element occurs a second time, but in that case, I just want to uh, keep it at true. Okay, so how do I express that here? Well, I'm just going to say that it's going to be uh, val or um, the value of x equals equals y. Okay, and now this is underlined in red because I need to be able to also check for equality, so I need to impose this type class constraint here in the type signature. Okay, so what is this operation doing? It's taking um, the next value in my list together with the previously accumulated value, and it's returning that value or x equals equals y. So if x is indeed equal to the element I'm checking in the list and this returns true, well, then I'll update my value to true. But otherwise, I just keep the, the previous value. So if it was true uh, before, it'll remain true. And if it was false before and uh, this is also false, then it'll remain false. 
Okay, so let's uh, reload and make sure this works. So lm prime of let's say three and the list one, two, three should return true. Okay, that works. And otherwise it should return false if three is not at the list. And well, if three occurs twice in the list, well, then it returns true. So uh, the way this works here is that, well, first I uh, start with a value of false, and then I take the first element from the right and I check whether this is equal to three. In this case it is. So then I update my accumulated value to true. Then I take the next element. So I check whether this is equal to three. Um, in this case it isn't, but the way I've encoded this operation here means that because I'm taking this uh, disjunction here that I just keep my value at true. And next I take the last element here, uh, three. Again, this is actually equal to the element I'm looking for. So uh, this operation will uh, return true. And yeah, so I just keep the accumulated value at true. So in this case, even though three occurs twice, um, I basically uh, just uh, turn the accumulated value to true the first time and then it doesn't change. All right, and then uh, finally, I'll implement a filter prime, which will uh, implement filtering lists using uh, folding. So remember that filter takes some sort of predicate. So it means that it's a function which takes an, an element A that will be occurring in the list and returns either true or false. And next, it uh, takes a list of A's. And uh, finally, it returns a list of A's, namely all of those elements in the original list that satisfy this predicate here. Okay, now how are we going to implement a filter prime using a fold? So I'm going to say filter prime of our predicate P is equal uh, to fold R of uh, the following operation with the following starting value. Now, what should filtering do on the empty list? Well, it should just return again the empty list because there's no elements in there that could satisfy the predicate. And so again, the difficult part will be writing this uh, function here that uh, is the correct operation that somehow accumulates uh, the right types of elements for us. Uh, again, it's convenient to write anonymous functions here. So I'm going to take the next element in the list I'm folding over, so that's x along with the previously filtered list. So I'll call this second argument filtered. So that's what I was calling val before. So this is like the list we've accumulated so far. So that's like the filtered list filtered up to the element x that I'm now encountering. Okay, and what should the operation return? Well, here we need to distinguish cases. So if x satisfies the predicate, so if px holds, well then, what do we want to do? Well, we want to append this uh, x to our filtered list. And otherwise, we don't want to append it, so we just return filtered. Okay, so uh, what's happening here is that I'm taking an x together with a, the filtered list, like the, the list I've built up so far, and if x satisfies the predicate p, then I append x to that filtered list, and otherwise I just leave it be as it is, and I don't include x. All right, let's uh, see an example of this. So I'll uh, check filter prime, let's say less than uh, three on the list one, two, three, uh, four, like so. And well, this should return the list just consisting of one and two because those are the only two elements that satisfy this predicate of being strictly less than three. All right, then let's move on to the final operation which we'll implement using folding. And there we'll see that in fact, folding from the right isn't always the best idea. And therefore, we'll also implement a second version of folding, which proceeds from the left, which will make certain things more efficient. The operation we'll be uh, looking at is reverse. So reverse should take a list and reverse uh, all of the elements in the list. So you can think about uh, now on your own how you would uh, implement the reverse function using fold right. Again, it'll be similar to these last uh, three folds we did here, where you have to come up with your own sort of custom operation, which uh, takes the next element in the list together with a previously uh, accumulated list of values. So that'll be like the, the list that's been reversed up to the, the element x. And then it should like uh, return the right type of list where x occurs in the on the opposite side of the list. Okay, so I hope you've had some time to think about this. I'll now uh, proceed to uh, my solution. So I'm going to write the function called reverse prime, and it'll take a list of A's and just return a list of A's, namely the reversed list. And now uh, reverse prime 
should just be a fold. So it's going to be fold right of some operation. And the starting value will be again be the empty list because well, if I give it the empty list, the reverse of the empty list should be the empty list. So now the difficult part is writing the correct operation here. So this operation will take uh, the next element occurring in my list, so x, together with the previously uh, reversed list, which I'll call reversed. And now I somehow need to append x to the other side of this reversed list. So the way to do this is to write uh, reversed, and then I use list concatenation like this, and I concatenate with the singleton list x. Okay, so let's see that that actually works. So if I uh, reverse prime, let's say I reverse the list uh, one, two, three, gives me three, two, one. Okay, that's good. Now the problem with this implementation is that here in this step, I'm sort of uh, using concatenation, which itself is defined recursively. So if I want to uh, concatenate a previous list like this with a list on the right, what's going to happen is that each element in this list here somehow has to be shifted over to this list here on the right. So remember that the primitive operation for lists is this cons operator. So if I do like one cons, let's say the list containing two, three, that's the list one, two, three. And this cons operator is like uh, the basic operation of appending things to lists. But if I want to append things from the right, it's much less efficient because let's say I want to append, uh, I don't know, three to the right of one, two, like this. So what's going to need to happen is that, well, I start with this list and then I somehow append two to this list using cons and then I append one to the resulting list again using cons. So uh, here I need to perform as many operations as this list on the left is long. Whereas in this case, I just need to perform a single operation. So in fact, this step here is uh, reasonably inefficient because at each step I need to somehow perform as many uh, operations as this accumulated list is long. And well, for long lists, this will quickly rack up a lot of operations. If you compare this with what we had here, so here it somehow wasn't a problem because we could just uh, add x to the left of this, this list here. But here the problem occurs precisely because we're folding from the right of the list. So to remedy this, there is in fact a second version of folding, which proceeds from the left of the list. So it starts with the leftmost value in the list, and then it somehow goes through uh, from left to right. So folding uh, from the left. So there's also a function in the base library called fold l, and I'm going to write my own version fold l prime of it. So it again takes an operation, but in this case, somehow the, the arguments are a bit reversed. So it takes an operation which takes a b and an a and returns a b. Next, it takes a starting value of type b. Then it again takes a, a list of type a and it returns uh, this folded up value of type b. Okay, now fold l prime on the uh, empty list. So I have some operation f, I have my starting value z, I have the empty list. Again, just returns the, the starting value. So that's the same as for folding right. However, now the difference occurs when I'm looking at what happens if I fold over a non-empty list. So fold L prime of some operation F, the starting value Z, and some list of uh, X X's like this. So this will be defined as follows. So I'm going to fold L prime with the same operation F, but now I'm going to uh, change my starting value. So I'm going to change my starting value from Z to just f of z x like this, and then I'm applying it to the argument x's. So if we quickly go back to the definition of fold uh, right here, you see that somehow fold right, what it does in the last step is it applies f with this element x to whatever I got from the previous fold. So somehow I'm applying f uh, to the outside, whereas here with uh, folding left, I'm somehow applying uh, f to the inside by updating my starting value. So somehow at each step, I'm just performing uh, the fold, but I'm performing it with like the accumulated uh, value in place of my starting value. Okay, so let's uh, see how we can uh, use this to implement a better version of reverse. So I'm going to reverse again. 
So you can take a moment to familiarize yourself with this uh, new uh, functional pattern by trying to implement another version of reverse, but in this case using uh, fold left. So I'm now going to uh, proceed to the solution. So I'm going to call this reverse double prime, and it'll again have the same type signature, so it'll take a list of A's and return a list of A's. And what will reverse double prime do? Well, it'll be a fold left. So I'm going to apply fold L prime. And now again, I need to feed it some operation. And the starting value, I'll give it is again the empty list because for the empty list, it should return uh, the empty list. And now the operation is uh, somewhat different. So you see here the type signature is somehow, the arguments are switched. So I start on the left with the uh, like previously accumulated value. And then the A is like the next element in the list. So here I now have uh, the following uh, argument. So I'm going to write a anonymous function, which is the first argument has like the so far accumulated reverse list. As the second argument, it has this next element of the list that I'm uh, like uh, presented with. And now you can see that the order here of these arguments is different from what was happening above. And so in fact, in order to reverse uh, X, I just put it to the left of this previously uh, reversed list, uh, like so. Now here I made a typo, so that's uh, why it's complaining there. And in this case, it's uh, underlined in blue because this operation here is uh, uh, could be captured by some other functional pattern called flip, but okay. So uh, in this case, I've managed to implement uh, reverse again, but here in contrast to above, like the because the arguments are in a different order, I can now use the cons operator rather than this concatenation. And this is much more efficient because this will always just take one operation, whereas this will take as many operations as reversed is long. So let's reload and make sure that this actually works. So reverse double prime of the list containing one, two, three, is three, two, one, as hoped for. So this function is performing just as reverse prime was. However, it's much more efficient. All right, with that, I'm done with what I wanted to say for this video. So we've seen uh, fold right and fold left and how we can use these patterns in order to really compactly um, implement a lot of operations. Now I'm aware that these sort of abstract patterns need some time to get used to. So if you're still struggling with understanding exactly what's going on, I would suggest that you kind of take a specific example and try to go through the execution of this example step by step. And uh, that will hopefully make it clear how this uh, folding left or folding right is somehow accumulating values across a list.